the Nikon 300mm f4.5 lens. Now should I shoot with it or use it as a doorstop? When I was tidying my office last week I moved a box and I found this. It's a Nikon lens. It's a prime lens, a 300mm f4.5. I was shooting a vlog at the time. I'll leave a link at the end of the video. So is this any good? Well, stick around to the end of the video to see some sample images I've taken with it and leave me a comment on whether you think the lens still has what it takes today. I'll answer all comments as soon as I possibly can. Oh, and please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that I can share even more of my 35 years experience working as a pro photographer with you. You never know, I might be able to give you one or two tips. So I think to myself, can a manual focus lens like this cut it today? Or should I put it back in the cupboard and forget it for another 20 years? First things first, the elephant in the room. This is not a lightweight bit of kit. But if you're up for the challenge of hawking a back bending 300 mil around with you on your travels, your efforts might just be rewarded. Now this was probably quite an expensive bit of kit in its heyday 30 years ago. So let's check out the second hand prices today. I mean, you never know. I could be sitting on a gold mine. It could be worth a fortune. I could buy a vintage sports car. Two or quid. A, what? On eBay. Two quid. There's one on eBay for two quid. Is that a mince print? That's nuts. Now I gotta get this onto a modern camera and I gotta take some pictures and look at the pictures cause two pounds doesn't even buy you a pint of beer at the moment. This is crazy. So let's get it onto a favorite of mine, the Nikon D3S. And straight away the Nikon is gonna be like, whoa, hang on, I'm trying to talk to this lens and it's not answering me back. I don't like it, no communication. Get it away from me, take it off. What's actually happening here is that the camera acknowledges that there's a lens on and it's communicating with it, but it's just not getting an answer. So instead of giving us real f-stops, look, it's giving us f0. Uh, we change that dial. We can still um, go on to manual and uh, we can uh, change the shutter speeds. But when it comes to the f-stops, it'll give us f0, f2, f5, f1. They're just numbers, they're not real f-stops, but it still works. Well, we're just gonna have to switch to manual, I guess. And it may be because this lens has not been used for 20 years, but the first thing I noticed when I got it on the camera is focusing is not what you might call smooth and light. No, you're gonna need a pair of mole grips and a tin of elbow grease if you're gonna be focusing this all day. But as I said, that's probably not the lens. That's my fault. I mean, it's been hiding in a cupboard for 20 years. What is this lens exactly? What was its market? What was it for when it was new? Well, I suppose you'd say that it was the cheaper and lighter alternative. Yes, lighter, I know, to a 300 to 8. An expensive lens, still an expensive lens, and a workhorse of most sports photographers. So a bigger UV filter on the front is probably only available by a window glazing company. And so big, it comes with its own carry box, which doubles up on the touchline of a sports field as a three-seater couch. No, look, joking aside, with just two stops difference between this 4.5 and the 2.8, the 4.5 is smaller, it's lighter, and it's easier to transport. Of course, in its heyday, those two stops were a big deal. When sports photographers were sitting under floodlights that were less powerful than the headlights on my car, two stops was a massive deal. It was the difference between freezing the action in a game of football and getting a great picture and a film full of blurry movement. But now with digital sensors so sensitive that you can take a portrait on the dark side of the moon, we have gotta ask ourselves, can't we just pop the ISO up a couple of stops? So let's get this onto a D3X along with my 35 to 70 mil lens. And I'm gonna go out, shoot some pictures at 35, uh, no, I'll shoot at 28 mil. 35 mil and 50 on the modern lens, and then we'll put the 300 45 on and see how it performs next to them, see how much of a difference there is. And um, well, I'll put those pictures up right now. So here's some 
pictures shot I will start on my drive now as you can see it's an ordinary picture done on a 28 mil lens uh, my car there everything's pretty normal nothing spectacular I haven't been on an expedition for these so let's have a look at the 50 mil and um, we'll zoom in just get the roof of my car you can see just in the distance there there's a uh, television aerial and it uh, looks like there's a pigeon on it so let's put the 300 mil on and see if we can get any detail on that pigeon and bang look at that straight in nice shot of the wildlife and look at the grain in the sky yeah i know there isn't any <laughs> and that's because this is a quality lens in its day it was a good piece of glass not the kit lenses that you get 70 to 400 now it, it, this was a good piece of glass so out into the back garden that's a 28 mil lens uh, looking uh, just uh, at the foliage in the garden in the autumn again nothing particularly special about that picture so let's zoom into 35 mil okay so again it is what it is you can see the quality of the lens I mean that Nikon um, 35 to 70 it's superb lens it really is uh, one of the best pieces of glass I think they've ever made uh, let's zoom it into the 50 mil there we go and nice bit of detail question is am I going to lose there isn't quite so much light in that foliage so if I zoom into those flowers am I going to start losing it is it going to start breaking up so at four five and with the ISO at 2000 let's go bang there you go you can see the increased contrast um, uh, by going up to uh, 2000s but the details there look at the leaves obviously I'm on a very shallow depth of field at four five and so that's apparent uh, with the lack of detail um, oh hang on the pigeons back behind me so on the roof there's the pigeon look at the detail in the moss there at the top of the roof and in the pigeons feathers again I, I draw the attention to the the lack of the grain um, and and the detail is from the quality of the glass um, really photography is all about the quality of the glass that you put on the front of the camera um, cameras you know they can do lots and lots of things but ultimately they are limited by the quality of the glass at their front so put the 28 mil on and that's why I'm not a wildlife photographer in between taking the 300 off and putting the uh, 35 to 70 on look the pigeon has flown away so absolutely hopeless wildlife photographer I don't think I'm going to be winning any awards in the Serengeti uh, very soon. So let's come inside and see how the lens does uh, with some available light. No flash here. So this is a 35mm shot of the kitchen towards the, uh, the light source, as you can see. So there's a bit of side light and a bit of backlight. It's on a white table. And... Um, so let's put the 300 on and focus in on that fruit bowl and see how it copes with the light here we go boom there we go that's a nice picture and the grain again it's it's pretty good you know it's not fast lens to use it's not like using autofocus auto exposure you have got to slow down you have got to manually um, focus up either as I say looking through the lens at what you're seeing or using the uh, the tool in the viewfinder the left and the right to get the circle in the middle of focus and the same with the exposure but the results are worth it for what you're paying when you look on the other side of the kitchen that's just a general messy kitchen shop that's uh, uh, I'm supposed to have cleaned that actually so uh, <laughs> let's see those tomatoes in the distance they uh, got a nice bit of contrast in them look so let's see if i can pop the 300 mil on and see if we can uh, get a bit of contrast in that fruit let's have a look boom it's a little bit colder i noticed than the uh, the modern lens um whether that's a different glass they used in those days but you know that's just a bit of post-production I haven't done anything really to these images I've let them come off the camera so we can see the difference uh, between the glass and definitely the older older lens is is cooler than the new one back out into the garden 
standard, regular, and as I say, I haven't tweaked the uh, the levels on this. Uh, it's has it came off the camera, so um, there we go. Looking at uh, the plants, let's zoom in to the 35 mil end. And there we go, that's the uh, 35 mil, uh, pretty much as you'd expect from a modern Nikkor lens. So let's push it to 50 mil. Yeah, it's keeping the clarity, the color, the saturation, uh, the brightness all the way through. So let's put the 300 mil on and have a look at those flowers go. Well, as you can see, I said before, it's a little bit colder. That can be altered in post-production but I do think the quality's there, and I think that's down to the quality piece of glass. What do you think? I mean, these lenses in reality, I have had a look, and you're picking them up for, I don't know, maybe um, 20, 30 pounds, that's under 50 bucks for a lens of this quality. I think if you're looking for wildlife or nature photography at all on a budget, then this is a great shout. Tell me what you think.